Welcome to the Simpler Business Podcast, where we talk about ways to do what you love and serve your people in a way that brings you income and freedom. I'm your host, Marissa Roberts. Join me as I chat with my favorite entrepreneurs about how they simplify their biz so that you can simplify yours. Does your ego get in your way and hold you back from greatness? Your ego is your unconscious brain that is usually motivated by old past beliefs, mindsets, and habits that you aren't even aware you're doing. We live in a very reactive world. Our egos are feeding on everything from social media rants to tabloids and news headlines, all designed to emotionally manipulate us for the benefit of the source. But ego isn't always a bad thing. In fact, it can be a real strength. It's only when it's left uncontrolled that it can unintentionally damage our relationships with loved ones in our personal life and with customers, colleagues, and peers in our business and career. The good news is you can change the role your ego plays in your relationships and make small but significant changes that add up over time and allow you to show up for yourself and those around you in a far more productive manner. My guest today, Christy Garcia, is a leadership coach, speaker, facilitator, contributor to Forbes Coaches Council, and founder of Mindful Choice Leadership Academy. She has 19 years of experience in sales, recruiting, and leadership development. For the last decade, she has worked with current and upcoming leaders from fast-growing organizations including Airbnb, Twitter, Movement for Life, Sunrun, and Oakley. Christy builds programs that help individuals and teams maximize their impact through self-awareness, ownership, communication, alignment, and accountability. One of Christy's superpowers is helping her clients identify and manage their ego in real time. Her clients build authentic confidence so they can communicate more effectively and maximize their impact within their professional teams and personal relationships. This is a modern approach that's designed to be simple. You just have to choose to be 1% better every day. I find this such an interesting topic and I'm very excited to jump into it. So welcome, Christy. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you, Marissa, for having me. I'm really excited to visit with you as well. Hopefully we can add some value to your, uh, your listeners. Oh, this is going to be such a juicy one because I think, you know, people hear the word ego and they immediately think, oh my God, bad, like terrible bad. (laughs) <laughs> and so I think us having this discussion today will be a really big eye opener for them. And I really love the idea of breaking it down into exactly how it can influence you and what you can do and how you can affect your relationships in a good way. Because relationships are key, really, aren't they, to any business owner? You've got to have a great relationship with your community, your suppliers, your stakeholders, your customers, just the world really. And that Mm. can feel a little bit overwhelming when you're the heart and soul of your business, particularly if you're running a small team or if you're only doing your business by yourself. So yeah, really excited to jump in. (laughs) Absolutely. Me too. Thank you. All right. Well, let's start with, well, let's talk about egos and the the kind of egos that are present when we're talking business. How would you describe it? Well, I like you started, you know, I look at the ego as both our strengths and our weaknesses. I think it's how we got to where we're at. It's our brilliance. It's our wisdom. It's, you know, who we are, um, both the good, bad, and ugly. Unfortunately, I think a lot of times we associate the ego with the dark side of us, right? The the mean, aggressive person in the room, the, the jerk who always speaks their truth, but too loud and too aggressively, um, or the narcissist, right? We use all these really vulgar terms when we think about someone with an ego. I think the real ego that I'm referring to is just our unconscious habits, beliefs, mindsets, the things that hold us back and sabotage us. Um, They're unconscious. So most of the time, we don't even know that we're doing it. But unfortunately, 95% of the day, we are unconsciously going through the motions. We just do what we do because this is what we've always done. And we don't always think in an intentional way, which is when the ego kicks in. So again, it doesn't always have to be bad. You can make really great decisions, but your ego is still running the show because it's not a conscious decision. Um, and I think that's where it can really impact relationships and impact your business. Um, and really just your own self-confidence about what you're doing. Running a business is really hard. And if you're not aware of that ego talk and the unconscious habits and beliefs that it has created in your life, it can hold you back on, you know, your beliefs around money, your beliefs around hiring a team, your beliefs around um, trusting to be able to uh, walk away and take a vacation, your beliefs to be able to delegate and coach and train a new team member. Um, so it really plays a massive role in everything you do within your business. 
Yeah, that's really interesting because it got me thinking of examples that I've seen over the past decade or so in business of people who had really great ideas, but it's their beliefs that kind of held them back from taking action and it, something could have turned into something amazing, but they had this sort yeah. of internal messaging that was holding them back. And it's not mm-hmm. something I think that it's easy for an outside influence to affect you, especially in a positive way. I think a lot of it is internal stuff, right? And if we don't realize we're doing that's it, awesome. how do we change it, right? Absolutely. We can't change anything we're not aware of. Um, and that's really, you know, when I refer to ego management, it's bringing those unconscious habits, beliefs, and mindsets, behaviors, the things that we've done since we were kids um, that, again, once served us that are now hurting us. And if we're not conscious of them, you know, that bigger reason, not just what do you do, but why do you do it? The why is the only thing that's going to make you change something. If you don't know why you do it, um, it's really hard to actually take the steps to proactively try to get ahead of something. Um, and if you look at the problems and the struggles in your world, whether you're talking your business, your family, your friendships, your you know your parents, um, whatever those current struggles are, I guarantee they're the consistent story that has shown up year after year after year, argument after argument and after argument, heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak, because it's all the same stuff. It's all ego driven. And until you know the light is shined on that ego's voice it will always surface. It might sound different and look different. There might be different players, but it is always showing up in your world. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. And you wouldn't even necessarily recognize it if you weren't looking for it. You would just think that, well, Mm -hmm. that's just life. That's just what my life is like. That's just me. That's just my family. That kind of Absolutely. The ego loves to make excuses. It loves to blame other things. You know, we live in a world that, It's always somebody or something's fault for why things show up or, you know, react the way they do. And unfortunately, with that mentality, it really is just an ego that creates a victim mindset that we can never create or be in control of our own destiny. We can never create or be in charge of our own decisions because something else is always responsible. And it, it, it was a really unfortunate way of thinking, um, for all of us, you know, we just, we always have a reason of why we can't do something if we don't know those underlying, you know, motivators. And, you know, the ego has three different, there's three different types of egos that I refer to, uh, the complier, the controller, and the protector. And each one has different motivators, you know. Um, sorry, did you push it? it no, I just like you were going for it. Really <laughs> <interesting, yeah. laughs> um, yeah, you know, and so each of them have different motivators. And when you think about the controller, the controller is the, um, ambitious, driven, uh, excited, passionate, motivated person, really, uh, it's got that freight train energy. I want to win. I want to get to the finish line, super fast thinker, um, results driven, loves to make things, you know, great. And so perfectionists can step in, um, micromanagement can step in over controlling can step in and we put tasks before the people. And so that can really sabotage Um, When we start to have to build relationships, whether it's within our business, whether it's outside of our business, if we aren't aware of that controlling tendency that wants to manage our own emotions and control our own emotions by controlling others, um, then that can again hurt us. You've got the complier, which is uh, motivated by being liked, you know, wants to have that validation, that approval, that permission uh, to show up. And so a lot of times what happens, um, you know, their strengths are caring and Um, compassion and always making sure that people are taken care of. So they put people before the task. Unfortunately, the downside to that is sometimes you put other people's feelings first. You worry about what other people think before you just take action or speak your truth. Um, You don't take initiative because you you don't really want to walk the boat, especially if you think someone's not going to like your action that you want to take. Um, It's hard to hold people accountable. So you might not want to be hiring uh, team members because you just don't want to be in that uncomfortable situation where maybe you have to fire or maybe they won't be the right fit or maybe there'll be just too much drama. And so, you know, again, there's always something that that ego will make us believe that'll hold us back Mm -hmm. in pretty much anything we would do in our business or, like I said, in relationships. I think it all goes hand in hand as a business owner. If you're not happy at home, you're not going to be happy within your business. There's always a a double-edged sword there. And then you've got the protector. The protector is the one that grounds all of us. This is where our um, our values, our self worth, our our confidence lives. And if we don't understand the motivator of that one, which is I'm I must be right or I have no worth or value, and that one makes us very um, black and white, very stubborn, very stuck in our ways. Can make us confrontational. Um, It can be either passive or aggressive. 
Mm-hmm. But the one thing about the protector is it loves and cares very, very deeply. And so it doesn't know how to process emotions. So instead, it just keeps it all arm distance away. And so really recognizing, you know, which protect, which uh, ego type are you and which one do you need to pull more from? Our best self uses all three egos, about at that 33%. That's when we're getting the gifts of all of them instead of overusing one or two of them, which is what typically we do in most situations. Yeah, that's so interesting because when you were explaining all three types then, I got little flashes of in my life when that side of me goes a little bit out of control, you know, where I'm, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little too controlling and micromanaging and it's because I want to avoid problems later and I think if I try and control yep. the people around me my my kids and my husband are probably listening right now going yes, <laughs> yes, yep, that's you, my mom. Those <laughs> because I just want to I want to avoid a hurdle later I want to make life easier in the long run and then the yep. people pleaser side of me I'm very even after years and years of working on it it's still my default nature to say yes mm-hmm. to everything even though it might be at the detriment of other things later on and then that whole protector side of things yeah I can really see where that kind of comes out where do you think it shows up mostly in business? I really like the example that you gave about not wanting to hire staff because what if mm-hmm. what if they don't work out? What if they don't get it wrong? What I have you know that sort of that feeling. Are there other really common parts where you see these different types to show up specifically in business related examples? Because I find that's so interesting. Yeah, and you know it, it really depends on what your dominant ego is, right? And so you know I think again, um, the one thing for all ego types, we all want to avoid failing. We all want to, you know, prove our worth and our value. So it looks slightly different. So like a controller wanting to avoid failing and proving their worth and value might be like, uh, they might sound really confident. They might look like they have it all put together on paper, on, you know, the internet, on everywhere you see them. It looks polished. It looks like the success is already there. Um, it's the image. And so a lot of times behind closed doors, they might be the one going, holy crap, how am I going to pay my bills? Um, this isn't working. What am I doing wrong? You know, they're, they're moving a million miles an hour, but they're not really getting the success that they're portraying. And so that's a big, um, big ego image that the controller does like look like you got it, you know, fake it till you make it look like you got it put together, be that perfectionist. Um, and then you'll earn it. Unfortunately, that mindset also holds us back because it it does, right? We can't we can't move until it's perfect. We can't uh, make decisions until we know exactly what we're supposed to do. We struggle to just take action. Um, we hate failing, and so again, if we don't know how to do something or we we think there might be a chance of failing, we'll procrastinate or just not do the task altogether. And so that's a really big holdup for entrepreneurs, especially if you're a solopreneur um, trying to do it all yourself. Like there are things that you are just not capable of doing to your expectations. And so that's where you have to hire out. You have to be willing to let go of some of that control um, in order to get movement and action. Yeah. Um, And then you've got the the protector. That one usually, it can look slightly different for the protector. Um, You know, I think the protector is really focused on the the facts, the logic, what's, what's right. Um, they say it's pretty grounded and, you know, chill through most of the stress until it's unmanageable. And then it gets too overwhelming. Um, lots of self-doubt, lots of questioning. Am I even supposed to be doing this? Am I good enough? Why me and not someone else? There's no way I have more value than, you know, so-and-so does, but if I don't have more value then no one will pay me. And it's kind of this evil cycle that we do with ourselves. And so recognizing what that self-talk is, where protectors really struggle is when they do hire, you know, um, people will never do it just like them. And they are more of that black and white. And so it's having that gray mindset, being able to say, okay, when, where do I need to let go of control of this situation? Not from the place of winning, but from the place of being right mm-hmm. um, to, you know, there's a lot of different ways to get to the number nine, right? When you look at, you know, math, there's millions of equations that can equal the same number. And I think that's where we have to really figure out how to let go of the how and really focus on the outcome so that that kind of attachment to the process doesn't hold the protector back. Yeah. Um, the um, the complier is the other, you know, opposite side of that is where they 
they tend to, again, they struggle for accountability. They want approval, validation, and permission. When you're the boss, no one's telling you, hey, that's a good idea. You should run with that. Um, you know, so you have to just be able to trust yourself and take that initiative, get out there and, you know, put it out there without attachment to what people are giving you back. Because entrepreneurship's lonely. You know, we all know that there, you, you don't always get the pat on the back. You don't always get the, the sale. And, but you have to be able to pick yourself up and really kind of be your own cheerleader in those moments. And I think that's where sometimes that comply or protector, they need that external validation in order to feel that they have worth and value. And so being able to find your people and pull from that internal belief of confidence. Yeah. So it's not necessarily that these things are bad things. It's just that they can get a little mm -hmm. too big sometimes, or they can get a little out of control sometimes. And often it's... Mm -hmm. in in stressful times. And I'm guessing it has a pretty big impact on relationships in terms of who you're working with, who you're serving, and even in your personal life as well, right? There'd be quite a blend between the effect yeah. on relationships from those things. Absolutely. And, you know, I think the one thing just to remember about the ego, again, usually our ego is just an overused strength. Like when we start to overuse our ego, that's when it's holding us back. Um, you know, it, and it's usually fear driven fear and emotion driven. So when you think about when it's going to kick in as an entrepreneur, you're super excited about something, you're you're ready, the plan's in place, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, I got to go cut the check. Fear just kicked in and ego's going to put a halt, right? Like that's where you get to learn where does that ego just push pause and create drama and emotion um, when it's not necessary. You know, I think that's the biggest thing is the biggest the easiest way to recognize when ego is showing up is usually through emotion. Uh, if you start to feel yourself, get feel anxious or double guessing yourself or, you know, having a million things on your to-do list and you're just too busy to get that, that one thing that you've been wanting to get to or you've been, you know, that's the goal. Uh, that's all ego stuff. That's ego sabotaging the actual success. Prioritizing the real priorities is what the ego hates to do. Wow. All right. So tell me about ego tactics that keep you stuck in your business, because I think there are a few things that kind of grind everything to a halt, right? When ego is a little mm -hmm. bit unmanageable, what sort of things pop up, do you think, on a regular basis? Well, it depends on what phase your business is, right? If it's the early phase, you're just getting started. It mm -hmm. could be stuck on building your logo. Like it's not perfect and it doesn't represent me. And it, I, I don't like the colors and nothing's ever going to work. Um, right. Uh, it could be the name. It could be, oh, the product isn't going to sell. No one, you know, I heard just uh, the other day, someone was saying, oh, they already sell that on, you know, YouTube or for free. It's on YouTube. Millions of people can find this content. And it's like, that's all great, but is that just a story and an excuse? And so I think it depends on where you're at. In those early phases, it's typically around either cutting a check and making the investment before the money's coming in yeah. or committing to actually, you know, making and building your business, whether it's around a website or, um, again, those early phase decisions that you have to make. Uh, if it's in that next phase of business where you're actually, you know, starting to see success, you're growing, you need to hire some people. It could be around, oh my gosh, what if I can't find the right person? Or what if, you know, what if I get someone in and I have to fire them? What if they don't serve me? What if I don't have anything for them to do? What if I'm not a good boss? Right. And we start questioning everything that we're capable of doing and the fear of the what ifs start to again, hold us back and procrastinate what's going to get us to the next phase. I think the big one is, you know, development, personal and leadership development for ourselves as entrepreneurs or, you know, small business owners, we don't always think we need it or we don't want to invest our money in ourselves because, you know, my business needs the money. Well, you are the business. And if you're not willing to invest in yourself, that means you're not willing to invest in your team or your customers. Because if you're not on top of your game, if you're not mentally strong, if you don't have the tools and the skills and the competencies to keep your leadership going, you will only cap at your capabilities, right? And so I think, again, recognizing where is that ego telling you, you know, don't do this, and it's going to hold you back from getting to that next level, even though you know you need something. Yeah. Do you know where I struggled with, I think, was pricing, pricing my offers and services. Mm. That's where my ego kind of just went, who do you think you are wanting to charge this amount? Or are people yes. actually going to pay for this? And I remember the first time I went to launch one of my offers that was a brand new one. I, I was a few years in the business, things were going well, and I went to launch something new and it still popped up. I thought I was over it. Yeah. 
still, it was like a new level kind of, and it, it froze me. Like I, I basically shelved the idea as a result uh, for a few months. Yeah. Isn't that the worst yeah. thing, right? Because I believed all this internal monologue that was going on, even though there was no evidence to back it up. Like later on when there I took it back. Yeah, there never is. And then you go and see someone else do something similar and it's like, oh, well, it could have worked. But now it can't because yeah. someone else is doing it. And then they're I'm already like, doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh yes, God. the excuse game of the ego. It is uh it's real. And and it, you know, I will say this is where that unconscious mind is so strong because in that moment, looking back, it's easy to laugh at it and know how crazy it sounded or you know, it had no relevancy. But in those moments, like that, that is truth in your reality, and Unreal. you feel like that is that perception is really what's going to, you know, tank your business or tank your idea. And I think that's the thing to remember. The ego never goes away. Like yeah. it will follow you. And the bigger your goals get, the bigger your business gets, the bigger your success gets, just the bigger the fears get. And so, you know, you have more to lose. And so the stories just get a little sneakier and they get a little weirder, uh, but they're always going to be there. And I think that's the number one thing I hear from clients like, oh, well, just tell me how to fix this ego. So it just doesn't bother me anymore. Oh, there was that pill. That's the diet pill, right? Like that's your never get fat pill. Um, they don't exist. You don't do that. You have to put the work in. This is something you have to continue to learn and grow because the ego grows with you. Again, it's there to serve you, but you also have to know and recognize it to manage it to where you're getting its full value instead of it, you know, trying to overprotect you or over serve you. Yeah, that's a good point. So stop thinking in terms of how do I get rid of this and start thinking in terms of being aware of it and handling and managing it and working with it rather than trying to get rid of it altogether. <laughs> Cuz that's absolutely not possible. Yeah. And I think yeah, it's a never good possible. Idea. Yeah. And I think too, if you look at your role models, like whether they be business role models or role models in your personal life, I think it's nice to kind of look back on, <laughs> it's going to sound silly, but one of my favorite things to do is to look at people that I really admire who might be a few steps ahead of me and then kind of backtrack and look at where they were, say five years before that or 10 years before that or at the start of their journey and realize that actually a lot of us go through the same sort of pathway with the same sort of hurdles and the same stumbling blocks and and it, yes. it really helps me to go oh okay this is not actually something wrong with me it's not a personal thing it's just business and life right and it's how it you make sure you're human yep absolutely yeah I would say you know the thousands of entrepreneurs and founders and CEOs that I've worked with they all have the same ego tendencies like humans are predictable. That's why I love doing this work with teams. When I get a, a group in a room and you have 20 people and you start to point out all the egos in the room, it's just like all these light bulbs going like, oh my gosh, that's why we didn't agree on that. Whoa, you do that too. That's exactly why we hit it off. You know, and it just becomes this like normal part of humanity. And the more we can learn about the ego and the more we can normalize it, um, within our world, the easier it is just to not take ourselves so seriously, you know, being able to recognize those, uh, brilliant fails, talking about failing, you know, as an entrepreneur, like our biggest fear is for our business to fail, right? We cannot fail. And the reality is, is if you're not failing, you're probably not going to succeed real yeah. much, you know, real big. And so I, I think it's reframing. What does failing mean? When you look at real failure, it's not completing a task. It's not following through, like it's stopping, right? But when you're just looking at a lesson that was a, because of a failure, like now you get to say, okay, I didn't meet that deadline. Why? And you restructure and you put in systems and you put in processes to make sure that doesn't happen again. That's a brilliant fail that got you more success, right? And I think that's where we can start to really look at brilliant fails as daily wins, Mm -hmm. I always tell clients, if you're not identifying your brilliant fails of the day, you're not recognizing your ego and how it showed up. And your team isn't either. And you will not be innovative and you will not be collaborative. And you will always have a struggle with feedback if you cannot sit back and reflect on what is good feedback. What is What were the, the great things we did today? What were the things we could have done better? And it's not about always looking at the things that we do better. You have to put the wins in there. But being able to see both sides allows you just to celebrate the process, that journey, that five-year journey of you cannot get to a better place without all those daily wins. 
Yeah, I really like that idea of recognizing both the wins and the lessons because I think you're right. That's what kind of builds that momentum because you can't spot what's going wrong if you're not willing to just stop for a minute and look at it and talk about it. Or that's where most of the things that improve your business start, aren't they? Because if you don't recognize the problem, there's no way yeah. that you can fix it. It's If it's a head in the sand sort of thing, it's never going to improve. And it's not actually, actually such a big deal. Once you stop and look and recognize it, I actually don't think most things are that bad anymore. It's like the fear of of looking into it is bigger than the yeah. actual problem itself. It's like when people are dealing with budgets in their business, right? And you have people who are so head in the sand, like I'm paying my expenses, I've got some money coming in, but it's a mess and I'm not going to look at it because I'm worried it's mm-hmm. not enough. And then they actually look at their numbers and they get to know it. And then suddenly they're more confident because they can say, oh, well, hang on, I'm nearly at my target. I just need to improve a little here. Or I yes. just need to tweak that here. And and I just need to trim an expense here. And suddenly it's not stressful and scary anymore. No, you know, I think that's such a great example because that's really what the ego does. Again, it's driven by fear, change, emotion. And so when we can recognize that we're just avoiding the scary stuff, um, the stuff that we are avoiding isn't that scary. When you think about a difficult conversation that you're not having because you just don't know how the other person's going to react or you've convinced yourself they're going to be so angry. And then you have it and 95% of the time it's like, Oh, that went way better than I thought it would. You know, and it's like, those are the things that the ego holds us back. Um, the ego does not like truth. It does not like facts. And it does not like curiosity because that debunks everything it's telling you in your head. So if you can just go external and say, okay, I need to figure out X, Y, and Z in order to overcome this fear. And now all of a sudden, the fear isn't even there because you realize it's not even relevant to what's actually happening. Um and it's all, it's okay to have fear too, right? I think a lot of times we think fear is is bad. Uh, fear keeps us honest and it allows us to get curious and figure out a better way. Yes, what a great way to look at it. Christy, I have loved having you on the show today. This has mm-hmm. been gold. This is a topic that I think a lot of people are scared to touch on because it brings up a lot of those negative feelings. But actually, this is a really good opportunity to to move through a lot of the things that are holding you back, even the things that you might not even realize are holding you back. This is a great way to kind of shine a light on that stuff without having it be a big negative thing. Like it's not, yeah, I really loved it. This has been so fun. Thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. Absolutely. I hope that your listeners uh, found some value in it. And, you know, just to follow up on that comment about it's scary to look at this stuff and, you know, think about the ego as your friend. If you aren't aware of your friend's, you know, bad days, then you can't help your friend. And so if you just look at your ego as, you know what, there, it's it's in you, it's happening. Everybody else recognizes when your ego is showing up, yeah. you might as well know too. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Everyone else can see it. So you might as well recognize it yourself and deal with yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. absolutely. I know people are going to want more from you and they're going to want to dive into the topic more and kind of work out how Mm -hmm. they can manage their own ego or handle things related to their ego. So where is the best place for them to find you? Do you reckon your website is the best place to go to? Yes, they can find me on my website, which is mindfulchoiceacademy.com or then go to LinkedIn, Christy Garcia or the Mindful Choice uh, Leadership Academy. And um, yeah, I run a leadership academy that's actually going to be opened up to entrepreneurs really soon. So if they want to dig into their ego, happy to uh, reach out and connect with them. Yeah, I think it's really a good idea to not try and DIY it completely when you first jump in because you're going to go straight into overwhelm and, and imposter syndrome and negativity and stuff like that if you try and add another burden to your own shoulders. I think having somebody there to guide you along who is not emotionally attached to all of these little things in your life and your business, it's going to be really helpful, right? Yes. And I'll actually even say, it's not even about um, trying to tackle it yourself. These are unconscious behaviors. The ego does not want you to find out about it. And so you can read all the books, you can do all the work, but if you don't have an external third person that's willing to point you in a direction that gives you um, the one, the areas to see, but then also that honest feedback that you don't really want to hear, but when you hear it, it's so relieving. Um, You know, I think that's where getting a third person, getting external feedback, you know, having a 360 360 assessment um, where you get to hear real feedback. I always say feedback is the biggest gift. We never ask for it. 
And if we do, we get it, we take it personal or it becomes, you know, something that hurts our feelings. And that's the ego's work. The ego wants it to hurt your feelings so you don't seek it out. Where when you can look at it as not personal, but now you can say, oh, wow, um, yeah, I can be more direct in my messaging. Or, oh, wow, I can, you know, be more social uh, within my community because everybody feels like I'm disconnected. Uh, those are all unintentional things. So, again, remembering it's not, um, it doesn't have to be scary. It's just the truth of your impact and you can control um, the real impact that lands within the world around you. Yeah. So don't be afraid to tap into it. Make sure you've got someone to help you along the way and you'll get nothing but benefits from it, really. Absolutely. It's life changing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. This has been the best conversation. I'll make sure that we've got your website and your LinkedIn link in the show notes so people can find you nice and easy. And everybody listening, we'd love to hear your feedback. So come over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review or pop into LinkedIn or for me on Instagram and let us know your thoughts on ego and your experiences and insights from listening to this episode. And yeah, I hope you all enjoyed listening as much as I've enjoyed having this conversation and I'll see you all in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Simpler Business Podcast. If you did, please subscribe, rate, and review us on Apple Podcasts. There's a link in the show notes to make it nice and easy for you, just the way we like it. If you're ready to simplify and scale your business, you can get started with my free audio class at marissaroberts.com. See you next time.